working groups who sit down and really think <laughs> and write, and then they grab this guy? And his new CD is Fabian Road Warriors. Now, I'm wondering if he actually was a rock star or he was just a homeless guy ranting and raving on the street, and they si decided to put it to music. Yeah, <laughs> the second thing. All right, let's bring in Wesley Willis. Did you meet the guy, Gary? Idea. Oh, yeah. Can you rap to him? It's going to be hard. Is it? It's gonna be Why? Hard. Because he doesn't really answer what you ask him. Really? Let me, let me see this. I'm, now I'm interested. I, I, thought, I thought this was like almost a little shticky, but it's not. I mean, he's the real thing. Okay. But the guy from his record company will be sitting back there. He might be able to help you. All right. Translate, Wesley. Hey, Wesley, come on in. How you doing? Hey, nice I'm to not see you. really homeless. I'm just a rock star. Well, most <laughs> rock stars are homeless. You're correct. Because they, they really... They do spend some time that They're way. all over. They're always on the road. Take a I'm seat. A session. I got a jam session to whoop on a horse's butt. Well, take I'm a seat and let me talk to you. I knock it out. I'm doing it good. <laughs> I'm not really homeless. Wesley, I notice you have a, um, a bit of a scar on your face. Were you in a fight of some kind? Or, or were somebody... Uh, I was not in a fight. Right. In 1991... A guy named John Diller or whatever. John Diller? me in my face with a bus cutter. I see. So uh, somebody slashed you on the face. John Diller slashed me in my face with a bus cutter. Really? Just as I was heading home on the forecast for a bus from downtown in Chicago. So you live in Chicago? Mostly? Yes, I do. And you... Uh, how was he discovered? How, yeah, how, wh wh where do you live? On the street? I live in my studio apartment. So you do have an apartment. You're not home. I own a rock and roll music company. I have CDs to sell. Right. I'm making money like there's no tomorrow. Are you really? You're doing well. I'm a musician. I'm not even homeless at all. Okay. But you were. You used to be homeless. I never was homeless. Oh, really? Okay. I never was homeless in the first place. I think Fred is actually involved in the interview here. I hear Fred talking as well back there, saying okay and things. I never Fred was has, homeless. Has, uh, you never were. So I always have a roof over my head. Now, what about the idea that you are a schizophrenic? Is that true? It's true. I'm going to tell you what's the problem. You hear voices in your head? Yes, I do. You do? Well, when my demon talks to me, my demon talks to me in profanity. Now, who is Dima? Demon. Oh, demon. Oh, there's demons in your head. When my demon talks to me, my demon touches me with profanity every time I get on the city bus. Really? And every time I get on the city bus, the city bus that I get on becomes a torture hell ride right on the spot. Because the demon is talking to you in your head and you're saying, God, this is torture. I wish they could turn off the voice. I say that all the time. Mm -hmm. My demon thinks I'm a jerk, a bum, and an A-S-S-H-O-L-E. So that doesn't... Uh your demon's name isn't, uh, has nothing to do with my father. He thought the same thing of me. <laughs> 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 my demon thought My demon's same. name is Nerve Wrecker. Nerve Wrecker? Mm. Really? Do you, you take medication for your demon? Do the you kind of medication that I take now is Lorazepam. What is that, Rob? After six and a half years, I would imagine had a total kind of, of 16,400 Hell City bus rides plus 300 Hell L train rides. So what you're saying is, I'm trying to understand this, you would get on the bus and it would be unbearable because that's when the demon would talk to you most. When the demon talks to me in profanity, it upsets me. Right. Because and when you're I get upset, that's when I get mad and start raving at everybody. Because you're a good man, and the thing is is that you don't want to hear this demon, and you don't want to even hear this kind of nonsense, but you can't stop it, and then you get so upset, you start screaming at everyone, trying to get it, you're trying to drown out the voice. Am I correct? You are correct. Oh. Mm, I'm glad mm. you understand. Also, every time I go on a plane, also, I have helped torture plane rides. Right. When you get, so it the seems, plane, too. It seems like mass transportation gets you mostly upset because there's this time to sit and think. And when as soon as there's time to think, that's when the voice enters your head. Any time the voice enters my head, that's after I eat anything of sugar I see. or drink anything of sugar. So do you stay away from sugar? Are you on some sort of diet? I try hard to stay away from sugar. Right. So I would think you would but stay away from sugar. But the sugar also puts me on the hell right. Phenoline puts me on the hell right, too. Yes. Puts that diet right cola. So how did you get, I mean, obviously you're a guy who's got a lot of things you're battling. Am I correct? Uh, how did you get discovered by a record company? Here you were, you were in, you were, you Yeah, were a lot of people with all their faculties can't get discovered. <laughs> I know, I can't I've been seen on MTV. Yes, you have. I've been seen on MTV playing my fiasco band at the Mercury Lounge here in New York City. Right. I also have been seen on MTV playing a show at the Rock and Roll Jam Session at the Electric Lounge in Austin, Texas. Now, who is this gentleman? Are you, are you from the record company? Uh, yeah. yeah. You are? Now, maybe you can tell me. How I'm just a rock and roll star with my own heart to whoop a horse's behind for belts. How did you find a guy like Wesley? I mean, uh, no one's goofing around here. I mean, Wesley is a, uh, is a rock star. He's on your label. You guys have put a lot of money into him. Am I correct? Yeah, well, uh, we... We uh, went to Chicago to do a little film project with him, and uh, it turns out he had a rock band that we went out and we filmed that night. And, right. Uh, well, how did the film project come about? Uh, through 
Some people at our label had heard about him. See, I was all excited I had a film, but I guess uh, a lot of people <laughs> are doing films these days. I'm just in the musician field that keeps me on the right track. Right. Now, when I work hard, just like a burning spitfire, I'm just doing well like a burning key car. Now, is it hard to be on the road? Is, is Wesley actually on the road right now and performing in clubs and stuff? Well, Wesley doesn't go on long road trips anymore. Right, because the demon. Well, anymore? When did he? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I do think it's sort of funny that they did fly him out here from California special for the show. They so did. I, how that I can always fly from gig to gig. Yes. Going on long road trips can really be a hell right. Right, and it must be hard for the people who are around you because if you get Going out... Going on long road trips can really be a hell right. Right, and if, and if the people around... When I was on a road trip with the Fiasco Band, it was a demon hell right. Really? Why? Because you were yelling at a lot of people? I yelled at everybody in the band. Mm. Everybody yelled at me in the band. I yelled at them back. Right, so it became... So a that's the reason why did I break the Fiasco Band up because I couldn't uh. control myself in my in manner way of trying to behave myself. So you knew it was your own fault when the band broke up? Yeah. You blamed yourself. But there was I nothing played myself. My demon made me play myself. In a way, it's a good thing you broke up with the band because now you have your own record deal. You don't have to split the you profits with that. I'm better. so damn lucky I have my own record deal. I'm thanking God of that. Right, of course. But thank God I'm doing well in the science of light. Right. But yeah. I'm working hard every day in the science of light. But really, I'm doing it well in the science of life. Wow. When I rock like this, that's the way it is to whip a muse behind for belt. Now, what about a psychiatrist? Have you gone to see one? Maybe he can help you stop the demon voice? I see Abtel Nirani. You do see Ronnie? I have a song by Abtel Nirani on my rough part CD, but I have them in Chicago. I see. So now, now, do you have a therapist who's trying to help you control all of this, to control some of the anger and things? I do not have a therapist yet, but I'm going to try to get one. Good, good, good. I would think the record company would want to hook I'm up. I'm just rocking and rolling it like Say by Zero. You know, you are in a way the, a true rock and roller in the sense that uh, you do anything, and uh, you're the real rebel, aren't you? A lot of these rock I'm the real rebel every damn day. <laughs> Alanis Marcel. I just like this song, Alanis Marcel. I like it.